welcome students uh, this is second lecture based on the welding process classification and uh, we'll start this lecture uh, the classification of the welding process is uh, can be uh, done on the basis of uh, the many criteria uh, the welding process can be classified on the basis of uh, the four main parameters the welding with or without filler metal the source of energy being used for the welding uh, welding may be arc or non arc uh, type fusion and uh, pressure welding type uh, to uh, classify the welding process is based on these four uh, factors uh, it is necessary to understand the welding processes and their uh, basic principles so that uh, we can uh, have a better understanding of the welding process classification and uh, for a better understanding of uh, the common welding processes we will start with oxy fuel joining processes the oxy fuel uh, joining process is largely known as a oxyacetylene welding process in which a mixture of oxygen and acetylene is used to produce a mixture which uh, is ignited and the combustion of gaseous mixture produces heat which heat is applied to to melt the feigned surfaces and uh, the filler metal in this process may be used or may not be used. Uh, this process is normally used for thin welding processes, a uh, thin uh, welding sheets, not for the thick welding sheets. The flux is normally used in these processes to protect the molten metal from uh, the atmospheric contamination and remove the impurities. The fusion uh, in, in this uh, welding process, the fusion of uh, the base metals takes place and uh, sometimes filler material is also used uh, in joining of the thick sheets. The next process uh, which is oxy fuel joining process is say uh, the gas braging process in which oxyacetylene flame is used for uh, heating of the fing surfaces to be joined and then braging material or the filler material is placed near uh, the heated zone and uh, because of the heat uh, the filler material melts and by capillary action it, it is sucked into the areas wh where uh, uh, the joint is to be produced. Uh, the similar principle is used in soldering process also uh, in which comparatively low melting point uh, filler metal is used for uh, producing uh, the joint. The arc welding based processes are many and some of uh, the arc welding processes of the commercial importance are like this. The first one is shielded metal arc welding process uh, in which uh, the joint is produced by developing the heat uh, between uh, heat uh, and heat is developed uh, by an arc arc is established between the consumable electrode and the base metal and uh, the molten metal is then allowed to solidify. So, coalescence or the joint in this welding process is produced by melting of the base metal and the uh, consumable electrode and after that the molten metal is allowed to solidify freely. Uh, in this uh, welding process the electrode is normally coated and uh, this coated electrode uh, the coating provided in the electrode uh, 
performs number of functions like it increases the electrode stability and pro, uh, pro develops the shielding gases uh, which protect the molten metal from the atmospheric contamination and after reacting uh, the uh, with the uh, impurities or uh, uh, slag uh, uh, after reaction with the impurities these coating fluxes form slag which uh, uh, becomes lighter ones so that it floats uh, on the surface of the molten metal that slag can be seen as, as the upper uh, at the upper surface of the uh, deposited weld bead. The next joining process in the arc welding processes is the TIG or tungsten inert gas welding process. Um, in this process uh, the joint is produced by developing the heat uh, between uh, by, by developing the heat from the arc uh, which is established between the non consumable tungsten electrode and the work piece. And the molten pool which is generated uh, by the arc heat is allowed to solidify to produce a sound joint. In this case electrode does not pro, uh, provide the filler metal, but uh, 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 the separately or uh, uh, another uh, filler rod may be used to fill up the gap. So, the filler metal in this uh, process may be used or may not be used. For joining thick uh, plates filler metal is normally used, but not for the thin seeds. So, the molten weld pool is allowed to solidify uh, freely in this welding process and, uh, um, uh, and to produce the sound joint. Uh, this uh, in this figure we can see that thin pipe is being joined uh, with the help of uh, uh, the uh, TIG process. Uh, this process uh, is uh, a very low heat input process provides a, a high energy density and that is why it uh, helps to um, join uh, thin seats uh, and produce high quality weld joints. Uh, the next process uh, which is normally used for uh, uh, the mass production purpose uh, uh, for producing the joints of the metals which are active to the atmospheric gases. In this one a consumable electrode is used and the arc is established uh, between the electrode and the work piece uh, and uh, to protect the molten weld pool which is generated uh, inert shielding gas is normally used and when inert shielding gas is used. Uh, we call it as a uh, MIG um, process or metal inert gas welding process and uh, when uh, active gases like CO2 uh, is used uh, then it is uh, termed as a GMA process or uh, the uh, metal active gas welding process. Uh, in this uh, case metal is uh, allowed to solidify. Uh, freely and to produce the sound joint. The deposition rates which are obtained in the MIG welding process are uh, much higher than the uh, TIG welding process and that is why uh, its application um, is more justified for the mass production purpose. The next welding process uh, is the submerged dark welding process where a joint is produced by developing an arc uh, between uh, the base metal and a consumable electrode and arc is submerged uh, below the granular flux which uh, becomes a fusible and the fusible flux melts and uh, surrounds or uh, covers the arc and the molten weld pool to protect it from the atmosphere. And, uh, uh, the molten metal is then allowed to solidify to produce the sound joint. In electro slag welding process, uh, this is a single pass welding process normally used for uh, joining of thick seats. Uh, 
here uh, initially an arc is established between uh, the, the um, uh, backing plate and the consumable electrode. The heat generated uh, uh, by the arc helps is used to um, melt the uh, flux granular flux and uh, when the molten flux uh, forms a pool uh, arc is extinguished and then heat is generated by the electrical resistance heating principle and which uh, uh, develops a temperature to the tune of 2000 degree centigrade and this high temperature helps to melt the uh, electrode and the faint surfaces of the base metal. Gradually, uh, the copper shoes which are acting as a mold uh, between the, the plates to be welded um, are moved in upward direction and the entire joint is completed in one pass. So, here a combination of arcing and the heat resist, uh, electrical resistance heating uh, is uh, responsible for, uh, for producing the joint in electro slag welding. Uh, the, the three dimensional diagram of the electric, uh, electro slag welding can be seen here. These are the two consumable uh, electrodes at different locations and here the copper shoes one in, one in this side another can be in this side. Here we have weld pool this is the backing plate and these copper shoes uh, are, are moved in upward direction. Uh, now, uh, we will see the resistance welding processes and uh, there are many welding processes uh, in the resistance welding process category. First one is the spot welding process. In the spot welding processes, the spots, uh, the joint is produced in form of the spots. Here we have two electrodes and electric current is passed through the, the, the areas where uh, uh, through the plates uh, which are to be joined and uh, by electrical resistance heating heat is generated and the amount of heat generated uh, depends on the I square R T where I is the uh, current flow in amperes R is the electrical resistance in ohms at the contact surfaces uh, and T is the time in seconds. So, uh, that uh, amount of heat required for producing the joint uh, depends on um, the, the, the material to be joined and uh, uh, the thickness of the plates. And here uh, the spots like uh, or the nuggets like this uh, at the interface of the two plates is formed uh, because of electrical resistance heating. Uh, here uh, no fusion uh, or significant fusion of the base metal. Uh, takes place. Uh, we will see the temperature distribution in the spot welding. Um, temperature uh, is maximum temperature is generated at the interface and uh, th uh, that is why nugget is also formed at the interface, uh, but some effect uh, uh, due to the heat and uh, the pressure is noticed at the surfaces of the component which are in contact of the electrodes. Like here this diagram shows uh, uh, the elliptical shaped nuggets having the columnar grain structure and these are the two plates which have been joined by the spot welding, but uh, um, here we can see that uh, some sort of uh, the, the deformation has taken place at the surface because of uh, the electrode pressure. Uh, on the work piece and a similar deformation can be seen here also. Uh, this next is the seam welding process in which uh, the electrodes in form of uh, uh, this is also a resistance welding process in which electrodes in form of rollers are used. Uh, the, uh, the electrodes uh, may both the electrodes may be in form of rollers or one of them may be in form of rollers. Uh, the, the, the plates to be joined are passed through the rollers and uh, electrical current is passed through these uh, roller shaped electro electrodes uh, 
which uh, produces number of nuggets in series and that we can see from here these are the two uh, ruler shaped electrodes and uh, when uh, the, the plates to be joined are passed through the rollers a series of nuggets are formed at the interface and this figure shows the cross section uh, where this is one of the rollers and this is another roller and uh, the nugget is formed in between at the interface uh, between the two plates. Next is the flash uh, butt welding process. Uh, the in, in the flash butt welding process uh, here one component is kept in fixed position and another is movable and uh, the, the, the two are connected to the power supply. Uh, the one movable component is brought close to uh, the another uh, fixed uh, component and as soon as it come closer it comes closer to uh, the, uh, the fixed component. Uh, uh, the saw circuiting takes place that leads that leads to the heavy arcing or flashing action. This flashing action generates a lot of heat and uh, uh, which helps to uh, uh, increase the temperature of the thing surfaces to the forging temperature and as soon as that condition is attained the movable component is forged, forged uh, with the fixed uh, component and the joint is produced. Here combination of uh, uh, the initial arcing uh, uh, is responsible for uh, uh, producing the joint. Uh, the explosion welding is the another welding process in which uh, explosive material is uh, placed in one of the component at the top surface and then uh, that uh, explosive material is detonated and uh, that helps to uh, produce uh, very high velocity to one of the component and that leads to the striking or collision with the another component and when the one component collides with the another component at very high velocity the localized deformation at the interface takes place and uh, that localized deformation produces uh, the composite uh, kind of material at the interface and uh, uh, the joint is produced. Here uh, we will see uh, the different explosive materials which are used for explosion welding process uh, the R like RDX, PET, NTNT, lead as it they uh, data sheet ammonium nitrate and the different velocities detonation velocities are generated by these explosive materials for explosion welding. Uh, the uh, schematic diagram uh, or uh, um, animated uh, diagram will show that how uh, this explosive welding works here. This is the explosive material which is placed and when it is detonated. Uh, the, the things go like this. Uh, this is how uh, the joint at the interface is formed uh, between uh, the one component and the another component and here at the uh, interface very localized plastic deformation takes place and um, that uh, leads to the mechanical kind of bond between the two uh, components. Ultrasonic welding is another process. Uh, where uh, ultra, uh, high frequency vibrations are used to develop the bond between the two components uh, to be joined. Here under pressure, uh, under, uh, uh, pressure the two components are placed and then uh, the high frequency vibrations are uh, provided and that helps to generate uh, the bond because of the localized deformation at the interface. Uh, here we will see the, uh, the mechanism of the ultrasonic bonding. Here is the uh, anvil and this is the sonoto tip and uh, this is how uh, the joining of the two parts in ultrasonic welding takes place. 
uh, both shear stresses and uh, the compressive stresses are held responsible for producing the joint at the interface. Diffusion welding is the another uh, welding process in which uh, uh, the components to be joined are kept under pressure at high temperature. Initially, there is a point contact here at these locations and uh, uh, gradually uh, when uh, pressure is high and the temperature is also high yielding and creep at the interface takes place which in turn increases the actual contact area and uh, uh, which leads to the reduced voids and uh, thinner contaminated layer. Uh, the, the, if uh, this uh, process continues for long, then the number of whites at the interface uh, goes on reducing and, uh, and uh, finally, uh, with the continued uh, vacancy diffusion and uh, the removal of the oxide layer uh, results in very few whites at the interface. And if the diffusion welding process at high uh, temperature and a high pressure continued for very long time, then uh, the complete bond between the two plates can be obtained free from the uh, whites and porosities. Uh, the dissimilar uh, belts which are uh, produced by the diffusion bonding can be uh, seen here. Uh, the titanium and the aluminum joint has been produced um, by the diffusion bonding and so the dissimilar metals are which impose the problems related to the metallurgical compatibility can be effectively welded by uh, the diffusion welding process. Uh, now, we will uh, look into uh, the various uh, uh, by having uh, all this understanding about the common welding processes, we will try to see uh, that how the welding processes can be classified uh, based on the various factors which uh, we discussed in the beginning of this lecture. Like welding with and without filler metals uh, can be classified like this, uh, the laser beam welding uh, normally carried out without filler metal. Uh, electron beam welding without filler metal, resistance welding without filler metal, plasma arc welding, uh, filler metal may be used, may not be used, tungsten arc welding, filler metal may be used, may not be used. Uh, then uh, we have gas welding process, fill, uh, gas welding process, filler metal may be used, may not be used and uh, metal inert gas welding process, filler metal is used and uh, submerged arc welding process carried out with the filler metal where consumable electrode acts as a filler metal. Then flux code arc welding also with the filler metal, uh, electro gas and electro slag welding process are performed with the filler metal and uh, if we see uh, that the welding process classification based on the type of energy being used for producing the weld joint. Then uh, you will see here the chemical energy is used in gas welding, explosive welding and thermite welding. Uh, mechanical energy is used in uh, the friction welding and ultrasonic welding. Uh, electrical energy is used in arc welding and the resistance welding processes and the radiation uh, energy in form of the laser beam or the electron beam welding processes is used. Uh, but uh, if we see except a chemical energy, most of other energies are uh, generated from the electrical energy for producing the joint. The welding process classification based on arc or non arc welding process. If we see a non arc uh, based welding processes, uh, 
are like this resistance welding processes, gas welding, thermite welding, ultrasonic welding, diffusion welding, explosive welding and arc welding processes are those in which electric arc is used to generate the heat desired for producing the weld joint by melting the fine surfaces of the filler metal. These welding processes are like sealed in metal arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding, plasma arc welding, gas metal arc welding, submerged arc welding and in the pressure or fusion welding processes. The pressure welding processes are those processes in which uh, uh, the molten metal of the weld pool uh, or the semi solid metal uh, solidifies in very confined space under the pressure. Uh, based on this concept, if we see the pressure welding processes, then we can put following welding processes under the pressure welding. Resistance welding processes like spot welding, seam welding, projection, flash butt arc stud welding, ultrasonic welding, diffusion welding, explosive welding, friction welding and many other welding processes under which such kind of conditions are formed when weld joint is produced. Then we will see uh, the fusion welding uh, processes where molten metal is produced and it is allowed to solidify freely then uh, the, uh, the welding process under which such kind of condition is produced can be like this here gas welding process, sealed in metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding, submerged arc welding, electro slag and electro gas welding. Uh, you have seen that uh, the, the, the classification based on these four factors is not very clear. Uh, that is why uh, some comments are there related to the classification of welding process based on these factors and these comments are like this for the first factor like comments on the welding with and without filler metal. Welding can be carried out with or without uh, the application of the filler metal. Initially when welding technology was developed earlier we were having only the oxyacetylene gas welding or gas welding only was the commercially useful process. And because of this earlier only gas welding process was the fusion welding process in which joining could be achieved with or without filler metal. Uh, in gas welding process when filler metal is not used then uh, the joint produced so is called the autogenous, autogenous weld or the such process is called as autogenous welding. However, with the development of the processes like tungsten inert gas, electron beam welding, laser beam welding and other welding processes, classification created confusion as many processes shall be falling in both the categories. Like we have seen earlier, many processes are such that where filler metal may be used or may not be used like in gas tungsten arc welding, plasma arc welding, uh, electron beam welding. So, depending upon uh, the, the thickness of the material uh, 
or the conditions which may allow or may not allow to use the filler metal. That is why uh, this uh, factor for classifying the welding process was not found very good. Next we will see the comments on the form of energy used for the welding process for classifying the welding processes. Uh, we have seen that uh, the various forms of the energies are used for producing the weld joints such as chemical energy, electrical energy, light, sound, mechanical energies etcetera. However, except the chemical energy all other forms of the energies are generated from the electrical energy for the welding purpose. That is why this criteria is also not justified for proper classification of the welding processes because energy required for most of the welding processes are generated from the electrical energy except in the welding processes like gas welding or thermite welding where exothermic reactions takes place to generate the sufficient amount of heat for melting of the thing surfaces of the base materials and for producing the sound joint. Now, we will see the comments on the arc uh, and non arc welding uh, process classification. Arc and non arc uh, process uh, classification leads to the grouping of uh, all welding processes in one class and all other processes in other uh, class uh, means this uh, if, the, if we try to classify the welding processes on the basis of arc and non arc welding processes then all, all arc welding processes will come in one category and the rest of the process will come in another category. Uh, in such classification it is difficult to assign either of the class to the processes such as electro slag welding and flash butt welding. Uh, the reason of this you will see uh, in arc uh, in, in as in slag welding process the process starts uh, with the arcing and with the melting of the sufficient flux leads to extinguish the arc. Uh, and further heat for uh, melting of the fang surfaces and filler metal in uh, electro slag welding process uh, takes place uh, by the heat generated uh, due to the flow of current through the molten slag. The heat generated through the flow of uh, through the molten heat generated by the flow of current through the molten slag generates high temperature uh, in the molten slag and that heat is gradually transferred to the paying surfaces and the base material uh, which leads to the melting of the paying surfaces and the electrode. So, here uh, heat is initially generated by arcing between the electrode and the backing plate to produce the molten slag and uh, then arc is extinguished by the molten slag and heat is generated by the electrical resistance heating due to the flow of current through the molten slag to produce the joint and that is why uh, the classification of uh, this uh, welding process or this electro slag welding process is difficult to put in either of the categories either arc welding process or non arc welding process. Uh, in flash uh, butt welding uh, process on the other hand uh, tiny arcs are, uh, are uh, generated uh, these tiny arcs uh, are also termed as uh, sparks or flashings. Uh, these tiny arcs uh, leads to the 
heating of the feng surfaces to the forging temperature and uh, as and when that forging temperature is attained the movable component is uh, pressed against the fixed component to uh, produce the joint. Initially uh, the heat is generated by the short circuiting between the feng surfaces uh, when the two components are uh, brought in contact. So, uh, it is the combination of the electrical resistance heating at the interface and the, uh, the tiny arc development both uh, leads to the development of the heat to produce the joint. Uh, thus, uh, here uh, such classification is also not perfect because it becomes difficult uh, to, to put the electro slack welding uh, or the flash welding uh, flash butt welding process in any of the categories. Uh, the fusion and uh, welding uh, pressure welding process classification uh, the comments are like this fusion and the pressure welding is most widely used classification as it covers all the processes in both the categories irrespective of heat source and welding with or without filler material. In fusion welding all those processes are included in which molten metal solidifies freely means molten metal is not subjected to pressure of any sort during the solidification. Like in gas welding process, submerged arc welding process, sealed metal arc welding process where molten metal is generated by the arc or the gas flame is allowed to solidify freely. Uh, few more points, while in uh, pressure welding the molten metal if any is generated at the interface is restrained in confined space under pressure and solidifies under pressure or semi solid metal cools under pressure means whatever a molten metal or semi solid metal is produced in, in the welding processes. Uh, that is kept under pressure during the solidification uh, like in resistance welding process nugget is formed or in uh, arc uh, stud welding process joint is formed at the interface. This type of the classification poses no problems and therefore, it is considered as a best criteria for classifying the welding processes. Uh, all types of the welding processes can be easily and effectively classified, classified using the fusion and pressure welding uh, process. Uh, based on uh, 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 the fu uh, uh, fusion welding process criteria, we will see uh, that uh, uh, in all these welding processes. Uh, the mat molten metal is allowed to solidify freely and uh, in pressure based welding processes where molten metal uh, solidifies uh, under pressure in confined space like uh, the pressure gas welding or resistance welding, friction welding. Uh, so, in all these processes uh, the uh, either semi molten metal or uh, uh, molten metal uh, is allowed to solidify under pressure to produce the sound joint. Building process uh, uh, classification uh, can also be based on uh, the factors uh, like uh, the welding and allied processes. Uh, the welding processes are those in which uh, joint is produced and allied processes are those in which either joint is produced or some sort of layer at the surface of the component is, is produced. So, based on uh, this welding processes and allied processes criteria we will see uh, 
that how processes can be classified. The welding and allied processes, the welding processes are like this. The cast weld processes in which molten metal uh, which is generated by either flash butt welding or by a, any external heat source is poured in in, in in between the fing surfaces to produce the joint. Fusion welding processes, resistance welding processes, solid state welding processes in which uh, uh, metal remains in solid state and uh, no significant heating of the metal takes place to produce the joint. In allied processes you will see here now. cast weld processes uh, are uh, like this thermite welding and electro slag welding. Uh, in, in thermite welding molten metal is generated by exothermic uh, reaction and that molten metal is, uh, is poured uh, in between uh, the plates to be uh, joined and after the solidification we get a sound joint and uh, the electro slag welding uh, as I have explained earlier uh, the cast structure is produced in the joint because of very low cooling rate which is generated and uh, uh, the molten metal is developed because of electrical resistance heating. Uh, um, uh, due to the flow of current through the molten flux. So, the molten metal uh, is filled in between uh, the fing surfaces uh, uh, and the joint is produced in electro slag welding. The fusion welding processes are those in which uh, uh, the fing surfaces are brought to the molten state and then they are allowed to solidify like carbon arc welding process, sealed metal arc welding process, submerged arc welding process, gas metal arc welding process, gas tungsten arc welding process, plasma arc welding, gas electro gas welding, laser beam welding electron beam welding, oxy fuel gas welding. In all these fusion welding processes uh, uh, melting of the fing surfaces takes place and then and the, that molten metal is allowed to solidify to produce the joint. In resistance welding processes joint is produced by uh, the heat which is generated due to the flow of current. In the welding process like resist, uh, spot welding, projection welding, seam welding, high frequency resistance welding, high frequency induction welding, uh, resistance butt welding, flash butt welding, stud welding. In high frequency resistance welding and high frequency induction welding, uh, the principle of the high frequency, uh, uh, the principle which is used in both these welding processes is the use of a high frequency current. That when high frequency current is applied, the localized heat is generated at the interface by the resistance in the resistance welding process and by the induction of the current in the induction welding process. In the solid state welding process no significant heating of the metals to be joined take place. Uh, like low heat uh, welding processes are those in which uh, not much heat is applied uh, are developed at the interface for uh, producing the joint. Like uh, ultrasonic welding, cold pressure welding and explosion welding.
uh, mainly the localized plastic deformation of the metal at the interface in these welding processes takes place and uh, which is held responsible for producing the joint. High heat input welding processes uh, in which uh, melting uh, does not take place, but uh, uh, significant heating occurs like in friction welding, force welding and diffusion welding. Allied welding processes are those in which uh, either joint is produced or some sort of layer is uh, developed at the surface to protect it from uh, the environment or from the wear and tear. Like metal depositing processes, soldering, brazing, adhesive bonding, well surfacing, metal spraying, in uh, first three processes like soldering, brazing and adhesive winding, uh, joint is produced while in, in weld surfacing and the metal spraying some sort of layer is developed at the surface to protect the component from uh, the external environment or uh, for increasing their wear resistance. Uh, in soldering process, uh, the, the, the two parts are uh, placed in a designed position and they are uh, heated and after that uh, solder or the filler metal is placed uh, near the uh, area where joint is to be produced that solder melts and then it is sucked in between the fang surfaces by capillary action which after solidification produces a sound joint, but a strength of the joint produced by a solder becomes low and becomes unsuitable for the high temperature applications. Uh, in, in the brazing uh, is the another uh, method which is used to produce the joints, in, in, in like braze, uh, like a soldiering, uh, soldering in, in brazing. Uh, 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 filler metal uh, is, uh, is used which is mainly of the copper base uh, alloy and uh, that filler metal is applied near uh, the uh, heated base metal surfaces which are to be joined and in the same way like soldering uh, it is uh, that molten uh, filler metal is sucked inside. And, by the capillary action to uh, produce the joint on the solidification. A strength of the braze joints becomes somewhat better than the soldered joints. Uh, in adhesive bonding, uh, joint is produced by uh, putting the adhesives between the fang surfaces and then uh, the joint is kept under pressure and uh, sometimes the, the curing is also carried out to increase the strength of the joint. The typical example of the adhesive bonding is use of M seal or the fevicol. In the weld surfacing process, the, the weld bead deposited at the surface is mainly used to cover um, the external surface to protect it from the wear and tear uh, like abrasive, abrasion, uh, adhesion, corrosion, corrosion or uh, erosion. Uh, the welding uh, based processes like uh, uh, shielded metal arc welding, submerged arc welding or flux code arc welding processes are normally used for um, developing uh, wear resistant layers at the surface. Such processes are called well surfacing uh, processes and then in metal spraying uh, the, uh, the metal in form of um, wear resistant material in form of either powder or the filler uh, wire or, or in form of wire is used to develop uh, 
a wear resistant layer at the surface. Here molten uh, that, uh, that metal wear resistant material is brought to the molten state uh, by using the various types of the heat sources and that molten material is then accelerated towards the surface uh, on which uh, the wear resistant layer is to be deposited which after the solidification leads to uh, develop a, a, a protective coating on, on the component. So, uh, these are the allied welding processes which are used for uh, producing the joints or for developing the view resistant layers on uh, the substrate or on the surface of the component. So, now we can summarize this lecture. We have seen that there are many ways to classify the welding processes. However, fusion welding and pressure welding criteria is best suited and most accepted way to classify all the welding processes. Thank you, students.